Coach Lewis here. I um, just want to go over a few things today on how to um, clean up your swing and prevent any type of lower back discomfort or pain during your swing. Um, uh, first things first, I want you guys to understand that before swinging, make sure that you're working on your kettlebell deadlift. That's ultimately going to set you up for a nice hinge, which will start to groove your hip and ultimately work on getting your swing to be nice, uh, uh, nice and clean and smooth. So um, it's important that you work on your deadlift um, in order to have a nice looking swing. Um, second, um, make sure that you're working on your deficiencies. And what I mean by deficiencies is that everybody's going to have um, different type of issues. It could be weakness in the core. So maybe, you know, doing some more hard style planks um, or working on some breathing techniques to help you kind of um, create more tension. Um, it could be a mobility issue in the thoracic spine, which will uh, affect your hinge. It could be a mobility issue in your ankle or a flexibility issue of the hip or et cetera, et cetera. So make sure you're making time for your deficiencies. And a way you can do that is just uh, create a warm up before swinging or getting into any workout that 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 um, allows you to just work on those things. So that could be your warm up. Just work on your deficiencies because um, <clears throat> that's ultimately going to help you clean things up, right? All right. Um, with that said, all I'm really going to go over today are just a few techniques that I've been taught um, that have helped clean up my swing and allow me to really feel the swing where they where it needs to be felt, right? Core, hips, hamstrings, glutes, etc. You know, it's just in all those spots where you're you're really getting um, everything to kind of like tighten up and um, engage. Um, so the first thing I want to go over is the setup. All right, a problem I see with um, a, a lot of people doing swings is the way they start. So um, you, you'll see a lot of you see a lot of this, and people kind of start getting ready to swing the bell. They'll be leaning back. We don't ever want to start the swing from there. So you want to create some type of space between you and the bell when you set up your swing. So the way I like to do it, and the way I was taught, which really kind of um, it's a cool little trick and uh, it creates a nice uh, space between you and the bell. It's just uh, uh, taking a foot, so the toe is going to be in front of the bell, and then you're going to go half a foot, and then you're going to take a step to the side, another step to the side, and you've created this space. It's about two and a half inch, uh, feet from you and the bell, right? From there, I like to get comfortable. I like to grab the bell, tilt it, and I like to stay in the hole. Like Just the same way people say you need to be comfortable in the bottom of your squat, right? I like to be comfortable in this hinging position here. So I'll hang out here, take a few breaths, make sure everything's feeling engaged. So my lats, my hammies, my hips, everything's nice and, uh, um, and ready to go. So all we're going to work on here is just a uh, hike and park. So be aggressive with your hike. Make sure when you hike, you're going straight into the groin and not letting the bell go below the knees, right? So hike it, park, hike. don't want to do is hike here because that is loading my back as I'm doing it right so the hiking and parking is extremely important you can run through five reps and do that like three times just to get a nice good warm-up of your hike so ultimately that hike has to be aggressive and strong um, and make sure you're doing a nice breathing match so nice sniff as you go in exhale as you park right from there what we want to do is put the swing together and um, understand that you are not lifting the bell at any point. The bell is not to be lifted, right? It's a ballistic movement. The drive of the bell comes from the hips, quads lock out, abs tighten up, lats lock in, right? We're packing those shoulders and the bell should float, right? Where you don't want to be lifting the bell. I know there's a lot of <clears throat> people who do the CrossFit version of the uh, bell, which is overhead. We're going to kind of eliminate that because most people can't even keep their um, back straight as they're going overhead. So um, I don't like to teach that version. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but the majority of people can't go overhead with weight and keep their rib cage and lower back in place. So um, let's go over the hiking and the swing. So. Again, I'm gonna set up, get comfortable, hike. So, <clears throat> a few 
things to take away from there is as I'm driving, I'm taking a nice sniff, hiking, hissing on the way out, making sure that the glutes, the quads, the abs, and the lats are on at the same time. And then I'm kind of playing chicken with the bell. And I'm just going to let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, and drop. Let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, and drop. Right? Think about the top of your swing as a vertical plank. So, we're here, and everything's tight. You want to, you want to, also, uh, one thing that helped me was just pretend somebody is pulling you with the string from the top of your head so that you're not leaning back and you're nice and tall at the top of your swing, all right? So I'm gonna do a few more. Tall, 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 tall. And I'm parking, all right? So those are just a few things that you can do to kind of clean up your swing. Um, I would also kind of uh, maybe do five swings and go into a hard style plank just to reinforce that um, tension that we want at the top of the swing. Um, so for those of you who don't know what a hard style plank is, you're basically in a plank position on your forearms. The only thing that's relaxed is the neck, so you want to elongate the neck. Right, and we want to create tension at the heels, the inner thighs. We're going to kind of have a small posterior tilt of the hips, lock in the rib cage, drive the elbows and toes together, and just focus on your breathing. All right, so let me do a few um, so I can demonstrate real quick so you guys can understand. So we're in a regular plank position, nice long neck, heels together, pretend you have a yoga block. In between your thighs squeeze that so we don't want you here we're gonna kind of slightly tuck in and give you a posterior tilt lock in the ribcage now we're just gonna drive the elbows and toes towards each other and you want to create as much tension as you possibly can you know I'll do anywhere from 8 to maybe like 12 breaths um, even five of them would be great so like let's say you're gonna do five swings five hard style um, plank, um, breathing planks, boom. Do that five times is a great way to kind of get the nervous system ready and just to reinforce that, that um, excuse me, that tension that we want to create at the top of the swing. Um, so just to um, just take away um, um, the, the, the practice of the hiking and the parking, Understanding that you want to be nice and tall at the top of your swing, all right? You want to be relaxed as the bell goes towards the groin. <laughs> nice and solid as you're at the top of your swing. Watch neck position. Just make sure you're nice and tall. Think about that string being pulled and you're in a vertical plank. <laughs> nice and tight, all right? I also recommend you to record yourself and see your progress in your swing. That's really going to tell you where you need to work at. Right, so if you're extending through your lower back, you know you might need to kind of learn how to extend through your hips or you know strengthen your core a bit. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them at, at, at the bottom of the YouTube uh, um, video page. Um, and look forward to uh, my next video. Thanks.